Hey everyone, welcome back. This is just a quick video to look at the limited edition Fostex full range driver that was introduced a while ago. I purchased these um, to see what they sounded like and to do a test. Um, now I'm very keen and uh, interested in full range drivers just because it's a favorite pastime of mine and um, they do offer um, good coherency and cl uh, clarity uh, for the cost and so as a academic interest I guess I continue to uh, purchase and look at uh, full range drivers and test them since it's a subset of the hobby. Um, they don't necessarily represent the best that's available in terms of overall sound quality. Uh, however, they do have a certain charm and I would consider, um, you know, in a prop, in a suitable application, which normally for me, it's a small listening room application where you're more closer to the speakers. Um, and so just keep that in mind when I do this test. Um, now, I wanted to see if these drivers performed as good or perhaps better than the uh, Sigma series, the FE 108E Sigma uh, from Fostex, which is a long standing four inch full range um, that's been around for probably 15, 20 years. And so when it, Fostex introduced, introduced these uh, limited edition drivers, I was uh, keen to try them out. Um, they look great. Um, now, if you look at the Fostex website, uh, you can see here they have the double-backed ceramic magnet. And uh, when I mounted the drivers into the 1630 speakers, I had to cut out uh, allowance for the speaker terminals. Um, they're, the, they had sized the magnet uh, as, as it was about two millimeters smaller uh, than the cutout diameter. So they've really uh, maximized the size of the magnet gone to extreme here. And uh, I personally like the look of the driver. I think the gray uh, looks really nice. Now, I did a bit of reading on it and they had um, they apply uh, some sort of a coating uh, that gives it that metallic glaze uh, look to it. So um, so let's uh, look at the test data for this driver. Um, they're not cheap. Sorry, I'm going back and forth here, but they're they're two hundred and thirty dollars U.S. each, and so they represent probably the upper end of the cost scale for a driver in this size category. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I did have pretty high expectations going in that this driver was going to sound uh, really nice, and so just going to zoom in here so we can see it more clearly. Um, this is the uh, response. Now I. I spliced it at 400 hertz uh, between the near field and then the gated one meter measurement. And so we see uh, there is a pretty significant mid-range peak there centered at, a, at around 2.2 kilohertz. And then um, it's pretty much flat beyond that. Now, um, if we look at the uh, published data here, um, it, it looks like the peak isn't as, as big um, as what I'm getting. Um, I was I was a little bit skeptical when I saw this response, um, hoping that things would be a bit better uh, than published. But in fact, it turns out that um, it's a little worse than than published. Um, now I took my data and uh, scaled it the same as the Fostex, uh, and you can see here this is what what my test results look like. Um, so um, I think in reality, uh, Fostex is. Fostex's results are actually worse uh, considering the, the vertical scale that they're using. Um, so I guess I needed to pay attention more um, to the vertical scale that they were actually using. These are 10 uh, dB graduations and I typically use 5. So um, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling there a bit, but um, now looking at off-axis, I didn't do a polar map. I just measured at 15 and 30 degrees, or sorry, what we're seeing here is 30 and 45 degrees off axis. Um, something uh, really jumped out at me. Um, you notice here that at 10 kilohertz, the response drops uh, like a rock, basically. It just falls right off. And so that was a bit concerning. What we normally want to see here is a gradual narrowing of the directivity. And then even into the upper treble, we want to see some uh, coverage. But what ends up, what ends up happening um, is that once you move 30 degrees off axis, um, the upper treble just drops, disappears completely. We're more than 10 dB down. And so what that means is that we have very little high frequency energy into the room even. And so we're going to 
likely see a real mid-range heavy overall balance to the sound even on axis because you got to keep in mind that uh, half of what we hear in an average listening room are the reflections in the room and so we do need to look at, at the off axis and uh, consider that as a big factor in the overall sound quality um, the off axis measurements that are published by Fostex they do a 30 degree off axis and they don't show the same drop that I was seeing which is unfortunate um, I think perhaps if I had seen uh, this in the test data I would have been uh, I would have shied away from this driver um, for that reason so looking at burst decay uh, burst decay is relatively clean I guess um, there is uh, some pretty significant uh, resonances occurring uh, there at 1.8 kilohertz and then there's uh, some breakup that actually continues to persist well past 12 milliseconds I've tested some Mark Audio drivers in the past, and while they do have breakup, um, the breakup is pretty well behaved and controlled. Um, you know, it's pretty much done by 10, 12 milliseconds, but what we see here is a continuation uh, well into, um, we're using a 35 dB noise floor. So um, we'd probably like to see better performance. Now the waterfall is again highlighting that this driver um, seems to have a lot of things happening across its bandwidth. Um, a lot of kind of maybe micro resonances and maybe that's a virtue of the odd shaped diaphragm where you have all these little shapes and perhaps they've tried to distribute um, you know the mechanical modal breakups and and kind of distribute it across its bandwidth but really what ends up happening I think is you're just seeing more noise occurring across and rather than just being a pistonic driver um, we're seeing the driver basically collapse at those uh, even in the, the mid-range frequencies which isn't uh, an ideal scenario at all so um, I tested intermodulation distortion um, at a, a 90 uh, dB test signal and you can see here I did limit the bass just to give it its best chance of performing um, so we didn't see anything better than about 50 dB um, normally I'm looking for a target of minus 65 dB and so this um, you can see there is a lot of noise happening uh, with this driver and right through especially into the critical mid-range where the ear is most sensitive so um, it's not looking that good uh, from a test data perspective um, I even took it a step further and limited the base uh, took the bass out completely and, and did a, a test signal that starts at 1 kilohertz and still um, those noise artifacts persisted so I think my uh, speculation there on the diaphragm and the surround and the dust cap kind of generating their own noise um, is likely what's happening here uh, because even if we remove the bass it's not the bass that's modulating into the mid-range and into the treble um, it's simply noise uh, that's occurring from the diaphragm and so um, yeah I've seen better I guess um, so I attempted to integrate this into the 1630 speaker which you saw earlier and uh, if you don't know that's a bass augmented uh, system where it has two five inch woofers that help uh, supplement the bass and um, I've used it with super tweeter on top and so trying to integrate this woofer into that speaker system I was not successful I wasn't able to get a balanced sound uh, from this driver um, and so even after applying some EQ um, especially in that region around the 2 kilohertz area it only helped moderately um, so I found the driver had a slight nasally uh, sound character um, I tried pretty extensively to you know wrestle with it and try to get uh, a good sound from it and um, I just uh, wasn't very successful so um, I guess uh, overall I was disappointed with the sound I don't know if this driver you know is is so niche you know that it needs to be um, you know just if I'm doing it wrong or if it's in the wrong cabinet or if it just needs something an entire different application um, I tried it with a variety of amplification and um, it just wasn't something that I was able to, to have any success with so if you're 
if you have any suggestions i still have the drivers um i'm they're on my shelf i i still am somewhat determined to see these drivers come to life and get something out of them. Um, it seems as though Fostex has really put a lot of work into them. So I'm not sure if I'm missing something or if they're only meant for a certain genre of, of music. Um, so uh, that's what it is. Um, so uh, not, not, not one of the more positive reviews, uh, but it is what it is. So take care and have a great day.